So interviewing Leslie, resident at Salt Marsh Castle. Um, this video is um, feedback on Leslie's journey to becoming a resident at Wildcrest Park. So Leslie, thank you so much again for joining us again today on the second day because we was rather blustery outside. And now you've got a fabulous story of how you came to discover Salt Marsh Castle, how you decided to move from your previous home and of course moving on. Now I wondered if you could share the story with us of what it was that made your decision to move from where you were living and why to then how you found Saltmarsh Castle, uh, how you came to uh, you know secure your home and what life is like now. So first of all, uh, what was the decision that, that you said, right, I'm going to move, I'm going to change my life? Well, thank you very much. Um, I had been living in Berkshire for well over 20 years and things had changed quite significantly over that period. Um, it was obviously Berkshire is close to Heathrow, um, so one is invariably under a flat path. If um, Heathrow get their permission for a third runway, that was inevitably going to be an absolute nightmare. Plus I was actually quite close to an arterial road which was being used as a rat run by people to avoid the M4. So the noise from the road had become unbearable. Then of course COVID came along, lockdown came along, and I started thinking, is this really what my life is going to be like? Um, and I started looking around. Um, some of the things that I really wanted was a bungalow, because one has to future-proof one's life, a bungalow in a pet-friendly residential park in the country. And I, famous old Google, I started Googling things, and I came across Wildcrest. Plus the fact that past neighbours of mine had actually moved to Hereford, but further, further down, and they said what an absolute joy it was living here. I drove up here on a Saturday, met with Martin. He showed me a couple of the homes um, and eventually took me to one that had been a uh, bespoke unit, which had unfortunately fallen through because the people who had bought it, their family decided it was too far for him to travel. The moment I walked in, it would have been exactly as I would have done it. Um, very modern, very streamlined, and I just fell in love with it. Obviously had a long discussion with my sister on the way home, but the next day phoned Martin and said, right, here's, here's the deposit, I'm, I'm moving. So the next stage, and you love at first sight, uh, a unit that suited all of your purposes, what a credible story. And you're talking to sister, and now you know we're on the move. Uh, we're, we're 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 making this life-changing journey. Uh, what happened next? Of course, your house would have gone on the market. You'd have prepared to sell. What was that transition period before from selling your home through to arriving with the keys yes. in your new home? Yeah. Well, you know, one always hopes the moment you put your house on the market, you imagine that somebody's going to walk in and say, "Yes, this is exactly what I want." Well, it took a while. Um, I, I did drop the price eventually because I just thought, I've got to get out of here. I want to go to my new place. Um, and, and of course, moving from a, a two-story, three-bedroom home, one had to actually downsize significantly, get rid of things. And I've got to tell you, even though I got rid of 99% of my, my furniture and downsized significantly of every, every other thing, when I eventually moved here, I realised I hadn't done enough downsizing. But, but it's, it's great, I now have, um, and it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. I, I absolutely love what, what we've done. It was, it was I can't say it was um, nerve-wracking, because it is where I wanted to be, and I've absolutely loved being here, um, including the dogs. They've, the one dog that had a heart problem, when I took her to the, recent, uh, to the vets in, in, in Bromyard recently, she said to me, well, her heart seems to have improved from what the, the details on the, on the previous vet's records were. So there we go. It just shows you what, what uh, country air can do for you. And, and, and fabulously, thank you. You're so eloquent when you speak, by the way. Thank um, you. 
And of course, uh, I've spent a couple of days on site now. I stayed at the Sapia Lodges, and I'm getting over some broken ribs, a broken hand, and an accident only three weeks ago. Oh, wow. And I woke up with this amazing sunlight coming through every angle of the unit, and I felt alive. And every person I've spoken to has said that there's just something about yeah. this location. Yeah. Do you feel that? The first night we were here, we slept like logs, and that's not only because of a move and you know, all the packing and unpacking that had to be done. It was just so beautifully quiet. The sunrises are magnificent, but I have to tell you, you need to be here at a sunset. They are absolutely glorious. I spend my life taking photographs and sending them to friends saying, sunset over salt marsh. <laughs> It's absolutely amazing. As well as the wildlife, I, I opened my kitchen door the other night and I could hear an owl, in, there's a very large tree in my garden, an owl hooting in the, in, in the tree and response was coming from further down Mar salt marsh. It, it was just so beautiful. The other thing that I, I did, did say to some friends that I was looking forward to seeing a sky full of stars. Now, Yes, it's winter, so we don't often see that because of the clouds. But I was up very early with one of my dogs the other morning, and I looked up and it was spectacular. Because obviously being down in Berkshire, the light pollution is unbelievable. It was glorious. And it does, it gives you a, a complete lift being part of nature and being at one with nature. <laughs> That's incredible because I met um, a gentleman that was called Adrian yesterday, just along here. He said exactly the same thing. He said he's a stargazer and he's you know struggled in the previous location, but he's bought himself a telescope. He said he can see here so clearly at night, and he was talking about Orion's Belt. I'm very fond of Orion's Belt because Orion's Belt, there's three, uh, there's seven stars yes. in the constellation, and it represents the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, the two to the north and two to the it's exact replica. Right. You take the three stars in the middle, the two to the north, two to the south, it's an exact replica wow. of the seven uh, pyramids of Egypt yeah. and Giza. And they reckon that the, uh, the Egyptian gods who ever built the pyramids have come from Orion. So, uh, interesting. Uh, now, you've also, you mentioned about the, 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 the clearing of the house. I did the same thing. And it's amazing how little we actually need, yet we accumulate over time that we don't need. Now, I imagine being a lady that's very eloquently dressed and very elegant, that there may have been some things that you realise, actually, well, I don't need those things anymore. Anyway. Well, Braggy, I'm not sure that I could get rid of all the clothes. <laughs> I still have a few things in the shed that I'm just n not ready to get rid of. <laughs> and I don't believe, you know, when you downsize that you start looking like a schlump. I never will, because yeah. it's always been, in, you know, it's, it's part of who I am. Um, yeah, books were a big thing to get rid of, uh, because I'm an avid reader. But um, being in a community, and I've got lovely next door neighbours, we now swap books. I, I finish a novel and I hand it over and I get one of theirs. And so it's actually become a, a wonderful community. Um, we, we, when we're going shopping, we actually, you know, I, are you, you, do you need anything? I'm off to Tesco or to uh, other shops, or, uh, other um, retailers are, are available, obviously. You know, I'm, I'm going off, do you, need, do you need anything? And it is, it's a fantastic community. Even though I don't know too many people yet, one's always sort of walking around waving, particularly when I take the dogs for a walk and just saying to people that I've sort of seen on a more regular basis. Of course, once the community centre opens up and residents can start to, you know, socialise a bit more, I think yes. a lot of people are looking forward to just you know, yes. uh, breaking down those yeah. barriers of what COVID has prevented us doing, oh, which is socialising. And you seem to me like you're a fairly social kind of lady. I, I like my own company, but yes, you're right. You know, I think people do need interaction. And the one great thing, you know, when, I, when I'd actually bought the property here, I, Martin gave me a 3D video um, clip of my home. And I sent it to some friends saying, this is my new house. And I was invited for dinner because it was obviously before the lockdown and I told them all about it. They came up a couple of weeks later and they're moving in sometime later this year. So it's actually going to be fantastic having really good friends that I've known for many, many years on the same uh, site. 
<laughs> the story is fabulous. And obviously, on behalf of Wild Crest, as I said to you yesterday, on behalf of Alfie Best, the group chairman, and the whole team, I want to thank you for choosing Salt Mars Castle. It's residents that are making lifestyle, life changing decisions like you have uh, that really are making this incredible community at Salt Mars Castle. Now, um, you're very sprightly lady, you're educated, uh, you've had a previous consultancy uh, business stroke experience. Um, we spoke about South Africa, South Africa yesterday and, yes. and how you enjoy living in the UK. Now, everybody that comes to Salt Marsh has got a different story why they decided to come here. Now, could you summarise the benefits that you now feel personally, um, you know, where you're living? Can you summarise the benefits of how you feel now after being on site? Well, interesting you ask that, Bradley, because when I first came here, I was still working. So I was in a consultancy. I could sort of do three days a week, four days a week, whatever the case may be. But I actually found that I was working 15 hours a day um, not able to take the dogs for a walk and I, I then said to myself what on earth are you doing? You moved here to be closer to nature in the countryside and yet you're focused on your laptop constantly. I advised uh, a client that I was giving them two weeks notice and I, I actually do have people that I obviously work with and I would pass over whatever I had been working on to um, a valued colleague um, and got hold of my accountants and said, right, bring my company to an end. <laughs> so I'm now thoroughly enjoying retirement. We, whether people think it's early or not, it's the right time for me. And I've never been more relaxed in my entire life. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Oh, we thank you so much, Leslie. Uh, thank you so much. It's going to always be a pleasure popping up to say hello and speaking to you, you as with other you. residents. And uh, again, once again, thank you so much for your time and for coming back again today. <laughs> I appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh,